All right, language arts 10 students, you're in for a special treat. This is Mr. Rarick and the Rarick family, and we're presenting Julius Caesar, Act One, Scene One. And in this act and scene, I will be the uh, narrator slash stage director, so I'll read all the italics parts, as well as playing the part of Flavius. And my dad will be playing the Oscar-winning role of the carpenter. My brother's playing Marulus. And my mom is the cobbler. All right. And we're, uh, we'll go ahead and get started. And action. Enter Flavius Marulus and certain commoners, including a carpenter and a cobbler, over the stage. Hence, home, you idle creatures, get you home. Is this a holiday? What? No, you not? Being mechanical, you ought not walk upon a laboring day without the sign of your profession. Speak. What trade art thou? Why, sir, a carpenter. Where is thy leather apron and thy rule? What dost thou with thy best apparel on? You, sir, what trade are you? Truly, sir, in respect of a fine workman, I am, but as you would say, a cobbler. But what trade art thou? Answer me directly. A trade, sir, that I hope I may use with a safe conscience, which is indeed, sir, a mender of bad souls. What trade, thou knave? Thou naughty knave, what trade? Nay, I beseech you, sir, be not out with me. Yet if you be out, sir, I can mend you. What meanst thou by that? Mend me, thou saucy fellow? What, sir, cobble you? Thou art a cobbler, art thou? Truly, sir, all that I live by is with the all. I meddle with no tradesmen's matters nor women's matters. But withal I am indeed, sir, a surgeon to old shoes. When they are in great danger, I recover them. As proper men as ever trod upon neat's leather have gone upon my handiwork. But wherefore art not in thy shop today? Why dost thou lead these men about the streets? Truly, sir, to wear out their shoes, to get myself into more work. But indeed, sir, we make holiday to see Caesar and to rejoice in his triumph. Wherefore rejoice? <laughs> what conquest brings he home? What tributaries follow him to Rome? To grace and captive bonds as chariot wheels? You blocks, you stones, you worse than senseless things. Oh, you hard hearts, you cruel men of Rome. Knew you not Pompeii? Many a time and oft have you climbed up, the, up to walls and battlements, to towers and windows, yea, to chimney tops, your infants in your arms. And there have sat the, the, the live long day with patient expectation to see great Pompey pass the streets of Rome. And when you saw his chariot but appear, have, have you not made an universal shout? That Tiber trembled underneath her banks to hear the replication of your sounds made, made in her concave shores. And do you now put on your best attire? And do you now call out a holiday? And do you now strew flowers in his way that comes in triumph over Pompey's blood? Be gone. Run to your homes. Fall upon your knees. Pray to the gods to intermit the plague that needs must light on this ingratitude. Go. Go, good countrymen. And for this fault, assemble all the poor men of your sort. Draw them to Tiber banks and weep your tears into the channel till the lowest stream do kiss the most exalted shores of all, all the commoners exit. See, where their basest metal be not moved, they vanish tongue-tied in their guiltiness. Go you down that way towards the capital. This way will I disrobe the images if you find them decked with ceremonies. May we do so? You know it is the Feast of Lupercal. It is no matter. Let no images be hung with Caesar's trophies. All about and drive away the vulgar from the streets. So do you too, where you perceive them thick. These growing feathers plucked from Caesar's wing will make him fly an ordinary pitch. Who else would soar above the view of men and keep us all in servile fearfulness? They exit in different directions. <laughs> 